the Holy Gospel according to St. Mark, the 16th chapter. When the Sabbath was passed, Mary Magdalene and Mary the mother of James and Salome bought spices so that they might go and anoint him. And very early on the first day of the week, when the sun had risen, they went to the tomb. And they were saying to one another, Who will roll away the stone for us from the entrance of the tomb? And looking up, they saw that the stone had been rolled back. It was very large. And entering the tomb, they saw a young man sitting on the right side, dressed in a white robe. And they were alarmed. And he said to them, Do not be alarmed. You seek Jesus of Nazareth, who was crucified. He has risen. He is not here. See the place where they laid him? But go, tell his disciples and Peter that he is going before you to Galilee. There you will see him just as he told you. And they went out and fled from the tomb, for trembling and astonishment had seized them. And they said nothing to anyone, for they were afraid. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. Hallelujah, Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Hallelujah. You may be seated. The Gospels tell us that the resurrection of Jesus happened very early in the morning, at the dawn of the day, at the rising of the sun. Sometimes when we think of, oftentimes when we think of a, a sunrise, we think of a scene, something like this. The sun is shining. You see its rays, its beams coming down. It's vivid. It's beautiful. It's brilliant. It's dazzling. Whatever word you want to put on it, there are blue skies and pinks and Oranges all work throughout the sunrise. You can feel the warmth of the sunrise on your face. And you just know today is going to be a great day. But there are some sun sunrises that are different, that aren't quite as glorious and vivid, a little bit more overcast. Now it's still beautiful in its own right, but it's gray and muted and seems to be a looming storm. That morning when you step out, you feel a chill in, your air, in the air that goes straight to your bones. And to be honest, you're, you're not quite sure what that day holds. When we think about the resurrection of our, our Lord, back up here, of our Lord Jesus, uh, oftentimes what, in, when we think about the resurrection through the lens of Matthew and Luke and John, uh, we, we have this picture of a glorious, vivid, beautiful experience. Experience. Uh, there was, and Matthew tells us, an, an earthquake, and there are angels at the tomb, and, and the guards, the guards trembling, falling as if dead, and, and there, there was a race, did you know that there was a, a race, uh, a 5K, I think it was, on the first Easter morning between Peter and John, and John <laughs> lets us know very, very much in his gospel um, that he won the race. So for all time, for all eternity, people know that John's faster than, than Peter. And there are encounters with our risen Lord Jesus. Where we see people see him face to face, where he walks through through walls and through surprise and, and anticipation and, and hope. 
But if we look only at Mark's account of the resurrection, much of that is missing. Much of that is, is not present at, at all. In Mark, there's no earthquakes, no guards falling as dead, no races, no encounters with Jesus. In fact, what we're told is that the, the women who went to the tomb, they're, they're, they're left feeling alarmed, they fled, they, they're trembling, they're astonished, they're filled with fear. That's what Mark gives us. Now, to be sure, this is the same resurrection account, the same instance that our Lord raised from the dead. Uh, we can say that he is alive. We can say with confidence, Alleluia, Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. But Mark's perspective is experiences, his original audience, Roman Christians who are undergoing persecution, all of these things impact his retelling, his account of Christ's resurrection, and it's a bit more overcast. For us here, it's probably, for many of you, not your first Easter that you celebrated. And as you think back upon Easter's in the past, you think of those glorious Easter worship services with a full choir, with a, a brass quartet, with a full house, with the smell of lilies going through the air, memories with families of eating honey-baked ham. Right? And when the pastor said, Alleluia, Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. It gave you chills. Maybe for you, maybe today is that Easter. But maybe not. Maybe this morning's sunrise is uh, a bit more overcast for you as you celebrate Easter and the resurrection of our Lord, you're also experiencing the death of a loved one, sickness and suffering that doesn't seem to go away, broken relationships, sin, that same sin that keeps Recurring over and over and over in your life. You experience the problems of this world, uh, the war, the, the culture is changing. Maybe, maybe you today just feel stuck. Yeah. All of these things can make a person afraid. But Mark still gives us a few things in his gospel. Mark gives us a person. Mark gives us a promise. And Mark gives us a people that flow out of, that are a result of Christ's resurrection. And so we'll focus on those three things for just a few moments a person of promise and the people our text the women are going to the tomb that first Easter morning they're expecting the stone which was very large Mark does tell us that very heavy they're expecting that stone to still be there and they get there and the stone had been rolled back and they were wondering well why? What, where did this come from? And, and so they go into the tomb and they don't see what they expected to see. They expected to see the dead body of Jesus. They expected to smell a decaying body. They expected, expected it to be damp and, and dark. And yet, when they went into the tomb, what do they see? 
sitting inside the tomb, Mark tells us, a, a young man dressed in white. We know, of course, this is an angel sent by God, sent for the sake of these women so that they wouldn't worry, so that they would know what happened to Jesus. And he tells them what happened. And, and the women, when they, when they look inside the tomb, what are they filled with? Are they filled with, with joy, with excitement, with hope? No, that's not what Mark tells us. Mark tells us that the women were alarmed. <laughs> First words of the, from the angel are, don't be alarmed. It's okay. It's okay. He knew that he had been sent by God to deliver that message to them. A few years ago, back in 2018, here in, in Breckenridge, there was a man driving down the street, and as he was driving down the street, it's the middle of winter, and he looks out and he sees a, a woman who was walking to the bus stop. She was going to take the bus into Breckenridge, and that man thought, well, you know, I'll, I'll offer her, it's cold out, I'll offer her a ride. And she took him up on his offer. About a 10, 12 minute ride over to Breckenridge, and during that time, there was a little bit of chit chat just to, I don't know, uh, calm any fears. <laughs> talking about how uh, this woman's father and, and this man had, had both, both worked for 3M and, and maybe even worked together. And at the end of this car ride together, the, the man invites this woman to church. And she went that next Sunday. That man, some of you might know him. His name is Forrest Rouser. That woman is Donna Lynn, our music director. Long story short, here she is <laughs> in our church. All because Forrest, years ago, just invited her, just showed her some love. Forrest, I would say this, I'll go as far as saying this, that he was a person, an angel, <laughs> sent by God to Donna Lynn to invite her, just like the angel was sent to the women at the tomb. Who, who, is, the, who is the person for you today that's invited you? I mean, maybe, maybe you think way back, that first time you came to faith, came to church, there was a person in your life who invited you to church, who who instilled the faith in you, who maybe wrote you a letter. Maybe today, even, there's a person who invited you to come worship. Hey, come to Christ Lutheran on Easter. We'd love to have you. Maybe you're filled with a little bit of fear at that invitation. You thought, oh, what am I going to get into here? <laughs> I haven't been to church in years. God has used that person in your life to invite you to come and see the resurrection of our Lord Jesus. So, talk about a person. Mark also tells us about a promise. Of course, what's the promise that the angel gives to the women at the tomb? Well, you seek Jesus of Nazareth. Who was crucified? A couple days earlier, they saw him on the cross. They saw him hanging, dying, suffering. And the angel tells them, He has risen. He is not here. See the place where they laid him. He gives a promise to them. Not only a, a, a promise that Jesus has resurrected, but also a promise that they would see him. 
He is going before you to Galilee. That's a, a little bit up the road up north. He's going before you to Galilee. There you will see him, just as he told you. If you're wondering, Jesus three times predicted his death and resurrection before he died and was resurrected. Side note here, when someone predicts their own death, predicts their own resurrection, and then it happens, I'm going to listen to the rest of what that person has to say. All right? The angel told the women this promise of resurrection and encounter with Christ himself. And it's worth noting, though, what happened when the angel spoke, when he gave that promise. Do you, do you notice? It doesn't, Mark doesn't tell us that the clouds immediately parted and there's no longer an overcast day. Mark doesn't tell us that uh, the women were immediately changed and oh, had hope and joy. No. What he tells us, they went out and fled from the tomb for trembling and astonishment had seized them. And they said nothing to anyone, for they were afraid. It took a minute for the women to process all of this. And it can take a minute for us today, too. It takes time for us to process the resurrection of Christ. In fact, a lifetime. And uh, a lot of things we experience in our lives need to be viewed with a resurrection perspective. I came across this video this past week, and I thought it does a good job of capturing the change of perspective that the resurrection gives to us. Easter is coming, but for many of us, this is not the ultimate reality. There is too much pain and suffering in the world today death has the last word it would therefore be foolish to say that the life and death of a first century jew named jesus makes a difference why might makes right power is superior to compassion and despair is stronger than hope so i refuse to believe a man can come back from the dead sometimes the most important facts are the hardest to accept Resurrection is a false hope. How can you say an empty tomb changes everything? Don't you see God loves the world as a lie? Money is God, and the one who dies with the most toys wins. I will tell you what I tell my children. There is no more to this world than what you can see, hold, and buy. There is no mystery in everyday life, and there is nothing sacred about ordinary things and people. Many of us simply do not believe that God can give life to the dead, bring light from darkness, and create something out of nothing. But what if the testimony of the women at the tomb was true? Then God can give life to the dead, bring light from darkness, and create something out of nothing. Many of us simply do not believe that there is nothing sacred about ordinary things and people. There is no mystery in everyday life. And there is no more to this world than what you can see, hold, and buy. I will tell you what I tell my children. The one who dies with the most toys wins and money as God is a lie. God loves the world. Don't you see? An empty tomb changes everything. How can you say resurrection is a false hope? Sometimes the most important facts are the hardest to accept. A man can come back from the dead. So I refuse to believe despair is stronger than hope. Power is superior to compassion and might makes right. Why? The life and death of a first century Jew named Jesus makes a difference. 
it would therefore be foolish to say that death has the last word. There is too much pain and suffering in the world today, but for many of us, this is not the ultimate reality. Easter is coming. Easter is here, <laughs> and it's okay for us to maybe take some time, need some time to, to process everything that means for us. I, I don't know what you're going through today. I don't know what suffering, what sorrow, what pain, what hurts, what relational dysfunction are happening in your lives, but I do know this. Christ is risen, and that changes everything for us today. It's okay if you still have fears. It's okay if you have doubts. The resurrection of Jesus does not immediately eliminate those things, but it does give us hope. And like the women at the tomb, enough courage to take the next step and journey with the people of God. That's what they did. After they received the promise, it was a bit shaky, of course, but Mark tells us that the angel it was the person that God sent, that he gave them a promise, and he sent them to a people. God gave the women at the, the grave, at the tomb, a people to go and be with. Who were those people? Well, they were the disciples. The same disciples that just a couple days earlier had fled, had scattered, had abandoned the Lord Jesus in his dying hour, in his time of need. These are the same disciples who at that moment were hiding, scared, that the same thing that they saw happen to their Lord would also happen to them. And the women were to go to Peter. Now, Peter, of course, he was a disciple of Jesus. Why does Peter get singled out by the angel? Well, we know the story. Three times Peter denied Jesus. You're one of his disciples, aren't you? The woman said to Caiaphas' house, to which Peter replied, I don't even know the man. Three times. So Peter especially needed the, the hope, the promise of the resurrection. <laughs> he needed to know that Christ was still for him. Now, here at CLC, I, I could tell you, I could tell you that we are the perfect church with <laughs> the perfect pastor <laughs> with a perfect relationships with the perfect sound system that never goes haywire on us and if I were to say that you'd all know I'm lying we're not perfect in fact I'm imperfect <laughs> we the people here at Christ Lutheran Church are imperfect we have our fears be honest. We fear for our children. What's this world going to be like? What's, what's it look like for us as parents to, to raise our children in the ways of the Lord? And, and we're afraid. We're, we have uh, uh, fears around politics. And quite frankly, we don't always agree on politics. We, we have fears about what's happening to this country, what's happening to the, the world. But we also have the one most important thing. Jesus and his resurrection that gives us hope. And so we, we cling to this. We cling to that promise as a people gathered together. And just FYI, 
we are going to be starting a, a, a new sermon series next week through the book of 1 John. The name of that sermon series is Love Is. It's taken six weeks to go through that sermon series. And what John, 1 John chapter 4 tells us is that perfect love drives out fear. Love is the antidote to fear. So would you come join us? I invite you. I hope you do so next week as we start through that series. So whether whether for, for you today, this is the glorious, vivid, beautiful Easter, or it's an overcast one, God himself gives us three things. He gives us a person, he gives us a promise, and he gives us a people through the resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ. To which we say, Alleluia, Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia.